Now what you need to know is that sometimes the limit does not exist. Uh, so consider this function right here, f of x equals the absolute value of 2x all over x. So what's going to happen to the y values as x approaches 0? Well, here's a table of values for that function. And as you look at the graph as well and the table, you'll notice the same thing, that as I approach x equals 0 from the left. Now look, look at that uh, terminology, that notation that I'm using. If I'm approaching 0 from the left, you'll see that little minus sign there. That means that I am looking at x values that are slightly less than 0. And the way to say that is you are approaching 0 from the left. So as I approach 0 from the left, you'll notice that all the y values are negative 2. And as I approach from the right, notice a very similar notation with that little plus sign. That means I'm using x's that are slightly bigger than 0, and I'm approaching x equals 0 that way. So as I approach x equals 0 from the right, the y values are consistently 2. So what's happening is, um, as I approach from the left and from the right, I'm getting two different y values. And when that happens, the limit does not exist. Okay, There's a big discrepancy there. So I can just say that the limit as x approaches 0 does not exist, since the function approaches two separate y values as I approach the same x value. All right, so now I'm going to give you some limits to find based on just this graph. I don't have a function associated with it that's been uh, stated, so we're just going to have to look at the graph to do that and evaluate these 12 limits. So the first one says, what happens to the y values as x approaches negative 1 from the left? Okay. Well, as I approach negative uh, 1 from the left, the y values seem to approach a y value of 1. Um, if instead I approach x equals negative 1 from the right, indicated by that little plus sign, the y values are now approaching 2. And as we just found out, if the y values are approaching two different numbers as I approach the same x value, then the limit does not exist. So for this third one, where there's not a little plus or a little minus, I have to look at both sides of the limit. And if I am approaching two different y values, then the limit does not exist. Now let's look at positive 1. Um, as x approaches positive 1 from the left, the y values are approaching 2. And as I approach uh, x equals 1 from the right, the y values are also approaching 2. So this is a situation where the, x, the, sorry, the y values are approaching the same number from the left and from the right. So the limit does exist, and it's equal to 2. Now let's look at x equals 2. As I approach x equals 2 from the left, the y values approach 5. And as I approach x equals 2 from the right, the y values are approaching 3. So again, since the y values are approaching two different numbers, then the limit does not exist uh, as x approaches 2. Now let's look at x equals 4. As I approach x equals 4 from the left, the y values approach 3. As I approach x equals 4 from the right, the y values still approach 3. That means the limit does exist and is equal to 3. All right. All right, the second part of this lesson talks about what's happening as I look at limits at infinity. Um, obviously, infinity is not a number, so I need to look at what I need to do as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity. All right, so let's look at some graphs. We're going to set our graph and calculator so that the x's go from negative 50 to 50 and the y's go from negative 10 to 10. Um, so what's going to happen to the y values um, as I go to the extreme left and extreme right of the graph. There's three functions here, and I'm going to look at the graphs. Okay, If I graph the first one, I get something that looks like this. So look at what's happening as I look to the very left and the very right of this graph. What you'll notice is they level off, uh, and they level off at uh, y equals 0. So you can say that as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity, the y values approach 0. In this second example, you'll notice something very different. Uh, the y values do not level off as I look to the very left and the very right. They actually go off into infinity. And then in the third example, uh, it's, it's something similar to the first example, but uh, the y values don't actually level off at 0. They level off um, at a specific number. And if you follow the graph and look at where they level off, they level off at about 4.5. Okay. All right, so why does this happen? Well, I gave you those three examples because they're very, very different, and it's an example of each of the three things that can happen when you're finding a limit as x approaches infinity. All right? All right, so 
Um, I can't use that strategy of substituting x equals infinity into this function because infinity is not a number. It's just the concept of being really, really big, uh, positively or negatively. So what I need to do uh, in order to evaluate this is to divide the numerator and the denominator by the highest exponent of x um, that is found in the denominator. So if I look at the denominator, I've got an x squared. So I'm going to divide every um, term in this fraction by x squared, okay? And that's what it's going to look like. And so what happens is um, I can, you know, reduce each of those fractions so that uh, 2x over x squared is 2 over x, 13 over x squared can stay the same, x squared over x squared can become 1, and 2 over x squared um, can stay as 2 over x squared. Now what happens to those fractions as x approaches plus or minus infinity? Well, if you have x in the denominator of a fraction and that x is approaching infinity, then those fractions will approach 0 whether the infinity is positive or negative. So any number over a really, really infinite number is going to be zero. So that looks like the two over x is going to approach zero, 13 over x squared is going to approach zero, one doesn't have an x in it, so it's going to stay as one, and then two over x squared is going to approach zero as x approaches infinity. So this whole fraction approaches zero, all right? Let's look at the second example where I have um, a higher exponent on the top than I do on the bottom, which is the exact opposite of what I had in that first example. Um, looking at the denominator, the highest exponent of x is x to the 1, so I divide everything by x. Uh, x cubed over x plus 3x over x plus 15x over x plus 8 over x. And so if I divide that, x cubed over x becomes x squared, 3x over x becomes 3, uh, 15x over x becomes 15, and 8 over x can stay 8 over x. Um, but as x approaches infinity, that numerator is still going to approach infinity. Okay? All right. And now in the third example, um, I've got 9x plus 11 over 2x plus 1. The highest exponent in the denominator is uh, x to the 1, so I'm going to divide everything by x to the 1. So I get 9x over x plus 11 over x plus, or all over 2x over x plus 1 over x, and that gives me 9 plus 11 over x over 2 plus 1 over x. And again, anything that's over x will approach 0 because x is approaching infinity. So 11 over a ridiculously huge number will be 0, 1 over a ridiculously huge number will be 0, but the 9 and 2 will stay 9 and 2. So I get 9 plus 0 over 2 plus 0, which is 4.5. So that's why that third graph approached 4.5 as I look to the very left and the very, very right. All right. So here's three more examples uh, for you to look at. And basically, there's a rule about being top heavy, bottom heavy, or middle heavy, looking at the uh, exponents of x. You'll notice that <clears throat> in the first fraction, the exponents of x, or the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator is the same. So um, that means that um, the graph will approach 2 thirds, a y value of 2 thirds as you look to the very left and the very right. Looking at the second example, this is considered top heavy because the degree on top is much bigger than the degree on the bottom. So that's a situation where um, the limit is undefined. It goes off to infinity. And then in the last example, the degree on the top is smaller than the degree on the bottom. So this is bottom heavy. And what's going to happen is this function, as you go very, very left or very, very right, the y values will approach uh, zero. So there's a lot of information for you to absorb in this video. Please feel free to watch it more than once if you need to. Pause, rewind, slow down, speed up, whatever you need to do um, to get all the information that you need. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know, and I will see you tomorrow.